During a service at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Prophet T.B. Joshua sent his evangelist to minister the morning water in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, setting people aside for God's special attention. As the morning water is ministered to this young lady, she begins to react violently as the evil spirits inside her begin to manifest. As the fire of the Holy Ghost causes these evil spirits to cry out, let us hear what they have to say. All over your body, Holy Ghost, fire! You wicked evil spirit, all over your body, Holy Ghost, fire right now! Who are you? Stop that nonsense! Stop that nonsense! Who are you? How have you destroyed her, you demon? How have you destroyed her? Took away her hair. You, you did what to her hair? I took it away. You took away her hair. Yeah. Okay, what else have you done to her health, her body? What else have you done? And she's always sick, so she can't go to school. I made her bleed through all her openings, and she can menstruate for 33 days. Okay, you said you made her bleed from where? Where does she bleed from? Huh? Her eyes. You made her bleed through her eyes. Yeah. Why? Why did you do that, you demon? Because I don't want her to watch that. You don't want her to watch what? Your TV. Which TV? That one. Which TV? What are you talking about? TV. Every time she wants to read her Bible, she gets a headache. So then she can't read it, and then every time I. Okay. So anytime she wants to read her Bible, you demon, you make her bleed through her eyes. And, and, and like she lays her hands on the TV and then she prays with that man. With which man? And that one, your father. Okay. So we are seeing here, do you mean this is how you make her bleed through her eyes on the pictures here? I already know. I'm the one who caused it. Because you always doing this to me. You send it through all over the world and you want to deliver people and it's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to so work. You, I know it. You are the one that I has caused it. I have it in my her. house and you, you just do Listen, it. Listen, what made you to cause her to bleed through her eyes? Why? Because she wants to read her Bible. Because she wants to read her Bible. And okay. She's, and she's always reading... And she like opens and she reads Isaiah 11 too and she's always telling herself that God will comfort her. What happens to her in school? She never studied from like the first time she started until today and she's always getting high marks. So then uh, I made her see like these funny creatures and the, the words when she reads them they fly off the page okay, so you make her to see funny creatures in her school so she cannot study and concentrate i torment her because people call her crazy but she's very intelligent i don't want her to work for your god so then like i send her people like perverts and then like they show they show her they show her like a penis and some of them rape her and it's like oh. I don't want her to serve, you know, I don't want her to do anything good. What have you done to her family? The first job that mom liked, she got sacked because she was going to pay for her school fees. Okay. And then she got sacked and she lost her job. And now, like, the sister has to go and work so that she can look after her. And look after the whole family because the mom is always praying and she's exhausted from praying so much. Okay, who is this lady standing beside you? Who is she? Look here. Who is she? I know who she is. Who she's is she? A, she's the one who took her here and they struggled from the airports all the way. Who is this young lady to you? She's my daughter, sir. At the age of eight, she was raped and then she didn't tell any of us. She didn't even tell me her mother. Then at the age of 12, then she started to see this, we started to see this blood coming out. But for me, as the mother, yes, she, she, she would hide. From where? It was coming out from her eyes. Then it would come out from her nose. It would fit like a coffee mug. Every time it drops down, then we know that the next thing that's coming, she won't be able to see any word in her uh, school books. The next thing, the school is going to ask us to remove her from the school. Three, three different schools. So right now, we've put her completely off school because no school wants to accept her. 
all the doctors everywhere, they see nothing. They say there is nothing wrong with her eyes. There is, they see nothing. They, and they can't help. They don't have a remedy for this. Okay, so it's beyond medical comprehension yes, that sir. someone can bleed through their eyes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They say it's, it, no doctor could diagnose her with any, even the university. It, no, no way. Everywhere we've taken her. And the demon also said it took her hair. What can you say? The hair just started to fall off because um, she was saying, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I want to go back to school. And then we tried to give her a book to read. She says there's nothing in the book. Then the hair started to fall off bit and it left patches. So you can't even do anything. Then she quickly took her scissors herself and she cut it all off. Uh, what is the name that people call her in the community because of this stigma of her eyes bleeding? Um, they just say because I am the one who, who is a witch. Now I'm teaching her these things and we've lived our lives in prayer, like completely in prayer. So people are accusing you they are and accusing, the whole family because yes, of her? Yes, and then they just chase her out. They say she's going to spread the, the demon of witchcraft in the schools. So now it is time for her to receive her deliverance. You demon, how did you enter this body? How did you enter her? I entered through a lot of things. People were jealous because she was intelligent. Somebody stole her school shoes, somebody stole her school books. And everybody just comes and they steal things from the family because the family is so rich. And they some, some of the things they don't notice. And they go and they take their pictures and they put them in the, in, in the water and they put them on trees and they trap them and they say, we're going to gonna get their riches and now they're very poor and they use the last money to come this side. Once again, who are you in this body? We're many. We are many. Okay, but who are you? Your name. Who are you? <laughs> Spirit of death. Spirit of death. Right now, you wicked demon, it is your time to leave this body and everything you are planted with her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, get out of her right now. You must go. Get out of her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're back on the floor. You're back on the floor. You must go. In Jesus' mighty name. You demon, everything you are planted in her, vomit it out. Get out right now. Anything you are planted in her body, you must get out. Anything behind this bleeding, get out. Vomit it in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Rise up, sister. You are free through the morning water in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rise up right now. You are free in Jesus' name. Congratulations, you are delivered in Jesus' name through the morning water. And who is, Thank you, Jesus. Who, who is she to you? Who, who is this lady to you? It's my mom. She's your mom. So, madam, your daughter is free. Thank the you. spirit that caused her to bleed through her eyes, that took her hair, it is out. Thank you, and she's Jesus. free in Jesus' name. Thank Never you, remind Jesus. her of her past, she is free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, Emmanuel. Good morning, church. My name is Hope. I'm from South Africa. The people standing beside me are my mom and my best friend, which is my sister, blood sister. The problem that brought me to the Synagogue Church of All Nations was that I had, um, I, I started bleeding from all the openings of my body, which included my eyes, nose, mouth, and uh, my ears, as well as sometimes on my arms, my paws would open and I'd start bleeding um, in random places at random times. Okay, well, it started in 2011. Um, I was going through a phase of depression and um, I came back from school one day and I started to have a series of bad dreams. Every time I'd come back from school on afternoons, I'd take a, um, an afternoon nap and then I'd fall asleep and then I'd have terrible nightmares where I'd dream people were um, trying to break me apart. Some people would um, sleep with me, but in a very vigorous way, um, I'd dream of um, irregular shapes and um, 
people with like eight arms and six eyes and they'd be running after me and um, it, it just went on and eventually I started to see these things and I couldn't sleep, I fell into depression. Um, I also started, whenever I was sleeping, I also started to sweat excessively and um, after that happened, my eyes would swell. And the first time it happened, it happened on my right eye. And um, I just started bleeding. I woke up and my pillow was red and I didn't understand what had happened and where it came from. I didn't, I'm not a person who tells everybody everything, so I kept it to myself. It happened again in 2013 on both eyes this time and my auntie was there and she, um, she saw it happening because immediately when it happened I removed the pillowcase off the pillow and I ran to the washing machine to go and try and wash it off before someone else could see it. And my auntie stopped me and she said, what's all of this? And I, I started crying and I told her everything. But every time I cried, I would cry blood and she saw it and I asked her, I begged, I pleaded with her and I told her, please don't tell my mom because I, I don't want to scare her, I don't want to worry her and so on. So in 2015 it happened every um, six to eight weeks and it started from July, June and um, it just continued. Now this time it was coming out of my nose, out of my eyes out of my ears and um, I, I started to get more and more depressed. I took a picture of it and I took my phone and I put it under the pillow hoping no one would see it. My sister woke up one morning and she wanted to borrow my phone. She saw the pictures, she told my mom. I confessed everything, I cried. Um, I was in a very miserable situation. And eventually what had happened, um, a, a whole lot of things, terrible things happened after that. Um, I started to menstruate for about 40 days. Some days I'd skip like two days and then I'd menstruate for another 40 days. It would just go on. <laughs> wow, well, glory be to Jesus Christ. We can see she's overwhelmed by emotions of joy because she knows that this is now her past. Since she came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Jesus Christ set her free from this terrible, excruciating condition, which she explained that any time she would sleep, she would have terrible nightmares, different kind of creatures would try to kill her and tear her apart. And when she woke up from those dreams, she would find herself crying blood physically from her sleep. And as she woke up with these conditions, it started affecting different kinds of problems in her life. Her menstruation became irregular. In fact, it was so much that she could even menstruate for 40 days in a row. And this definitely had many different kind of physical consequences in her body. So can you just tell us how did this problem affect you both physically, spiritually, and emotionally, and socially more than anything else? Um, every time I, I wanted to go to school, and it happened six times and um, I told my one of my friends and um, she saw it happen in the toilet and I told her to tell to excuse me from class that day and um, it happened again but it was in class and people were running away from me they started to call me a devil child um, they said um, I was evil and some people thought that um, the condition I had was contagious and it affected me so much so that um, I was eventually kicked out from school. I couldn't continue anymore. <laughs> okay, we have listened to the life experiences of our sister. She's so young yet she has experienced so much pain and trouble from the evil one and we give glory to God Almighty today that she is here and her life has been transformed. So during the clip we just watched, we saw the demon that caused these eyes to bleed and all these different conditions in your life. Can you just explain more about that? 
Okay, well, um, it caused a lot of depression, fatigue. I couldn't sleep. I would only sleep for like two hours. And um, every time I read my Bible, um, I'd start... These tears of blood would just start dripping onto my Bible. And I'd just close my Bible quickly. And eventually I started reading my Bible upright. And also what happened was that um, I... Because I, I wasn't sleeping and I wasn't eating and I was just thinking about what was going on with me, um, I started to, um, I guess I could say, I started to hate myself and I contemplated on um, suicide. And um, I, I hated to see my family watch me suffer. I hated to make them suffer. So I thought the best way to get rid of this problem was to commit suicide and times without number my mom um, stopped me and I tried to hang myself my mom walked in on me um, I took painkillers and the painkillers are supposed to make you one pulse is supposed to make you see for six hours I took about 14 of those and immediately um, my mom took me oh she made me drink plenty of water and she started praying over me, so I, I believe that it was only God who saved me. And um, I, when I, I also lost my hair, um, it's, it, it started falling off, so I, what happened is that it fell off on the sides, and then every time I would comb, it was as if I was going through chemotherapy or something, and um, I hid all the pieces of my hair um, under my cupboard and some of it I I just cut it and I told my mom that I was styling it when I knew what was going on. Eventually my hair fell and my mom told me um, something is really wrong, you need to tell me the truth and I, she, she found out that my hair started falling off because she, she could see it on my shoulders. and. Um, it just affected me spiritually because, you know, every time I read my Bible, I couldn't read. Um, mentally, I was not thinking. I was just, I stopped thinking. I started thinking about one thing, nightmares. Uh, physically, I lost weight. I became pale. The demon also caused me to be molested by people I did not know. Um, when I was eight years old, I was going to school. And um, this man followed me, and he raped me. But um, I don't remember much of that. When I was about um, in 2012, um, again, I had a, a friend, and we were together, and he offered me um, cookies, but um, I didn't know what was in there because I thought he was my friend. So. I ate them and immediately I fell into sleep and I realized that he actually raped me and he took me home and he lied to my auntie that um, something had happened to me and he found me. But then, um, then again last year, um, again I was walking to school and I was raped again and um, I, I didn't confess anything, I didn't say anything, I, I went home, I cried. The situation was just severe, it was too much, and that's also one of the things that led me to commit suicide. Okay, so we have gotten an understanding now of the kind of condition that actually brought you to the Synagogue Church of Ordinations, and I think that each and every one of us can feel the same pain that she has experienced as well during her life. So can you just tell us, how did you finally end up in the Synagogue Church of All Nations and what happened when you came? Before we came to the synagogue, we were basically on our way to poverty because we were spending so much money on my medical bills and everything. So my mom sold, sold her fridge. She, well, she sold our fridge, our couch, our beds, and for accommodation and transport to Skoan. And um, when we came, we came with faith. And um, 
I, I was looking for God at that time. I was looking for a proper relationship with Jesus. I was tired of going to other churches and um, being prayed for over and over again and not receiving help. I was tired of being rejected. And so um, with the little money that we had and we gathered, we came to the Skoan and I was delivered. And exactly what I was looking for, I found, which was the perfect relationship with Jesus Christ himself. If you know that this is the God that we serve, put your hands together for Jesus. So that was how you received your deliverance at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And can you now tell us, we are all eager to hear, after your deliverance. We understand that deliverance happened some time back, a couple of months back. Can you tell us, after your deliverance, how has your life turned around? Start with the physical aspect, spiritually, emotionally, and socially. Okay, um, in terms of physically, um, I have received so much rest in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, spiritually, physically, mentally. Um, I'm just so revived. I'm on fire for Jesus, you know, because I believe what had happened to me is now, I, I, I thank God that it has happened because it has brought up a new me, you know. and. Um, I'm, I'm speechless because I didn't think my life would be where it would be today. And um, we regained everything in double-double. And my health, double-double. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So many people are sitting down. They want to understand, do you mean now? after your deliverance what about the bleeding eyes the nightmares the hair falling off and so on are you still experiencing these kind of things okay um my eyes have stopped bleeding i was just crying two minutes ago and my eyes are crystal clear and i'm a happy child whenever i cry i look at my tears and i say thank you jesus it means the world to me whenever i'm blowing my nose i look at my snot and i say thank you jesus uh, when I cough and I want to cough out mucus or phlegm, I cough it out and I say, thank you, Jesus. It is crystal clear. Um, in terms of my health, um, I'm, I'm back to the way things were. And um, yes, uh, this is my hair before it fell off. And this is the time when I was going through the trial and whatever I was going through and as time progressed my hair has actually come out much thicker and healthier and the people who are doing my hair in the salon are always telling me my hair is too great and I thank Jesus for that and this is a recent picture of what my hair looks like and um, My deliverance was exactly last year, round about this time, which means this is truly a miracle. God has just done it all for me. Thank you, Jesus. In terms of my menstruation, well, um, Everything is back to normal. I menstruate from three to four days, whereas before I could menstruate for 30 days or 40 days straight. And um, this is actually the first year where I haven't experienced any form of perversion in my life. No one has um, tried to sexually harass me in any form or manner from the time I was eight. Up until last year, I would see people who would just, or I would come across people who would have urges to just do things to me, but 
Glory to God, this year has come and gone and there's nothing whatsoever like that. Emmanuel Church. My name is Tuli from South Africa. Uh, I'm really grateful to God to be standing in your midst sharing this testimony. Um, as a mother, as a parent, it was very painful to me. Unexplainably painful. I can't um, measure it to anything or, you know, I really can't really match it to any pain because I would live a prayer life and we all think once I pray things are going to look okay or I will understand what's going on but in, in her case I myself didn't understand strangely when things happen she wouldn't even mention to me knowing that I'm a caring mother but outside to all that I just continued with prayer I said God has promised not to leave me nor forsake me do you now testify to what your daughter have said that this condition is over she is healed and everything is restored back to normal now is that correct yes sir she's complete she's healed she's doing ten a hundred times better the report from the school came back to prove that she's doing far much she's back getting her 90 percent all the time wow let's put our hands together for jesus christ Emmanuel Church, my name is Faith, and I'd like to thank God for my sister's life today. I thank Jesus Christ for this ministry because it has brought restoration to our lives. Um, being the closest to my sister, this really challenged our family, and I was one of the first people to find out about her condition. And, you know, trying to get through each phase and each stage, it affected us totally. Like the whole family crumbled to try and get through to her deliverance. And I confirm everything she said, and I thank God because there is so much more peace in her life. She has focus now, and more importantly, there's progress. She has, she can now expect a better future within herself for Christ. Thank you. So finally now, my sister, there are many young people out there that are listening to you right now. They may be passing through depression. They may be passing through thoughts of ending their own life. They may be passing through similar conditions or other conditions that are also very tough to bear with. Can you just give a word of advice to them right now? To viewers all over the world, young people, cast your cares on Jesus because he cares for you. No matter your situation, God still has something to say. Your situation may be as bad as mine, or even worse, or slightly not so bad. Whatever you do, make the Word of God the standard for your life, and you will come back with your testimony. Just believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Believe He can do it for you. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So finally, we want to encourage you now as we have had this wonderful testimony in your life, make sure you stay close to Jesus Christ and make His Word the standard for your own life so that these wonderful testimonies and breakthroughs that you have been experiencing will continue and last and be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name.